This is the Domke Metro Messenger Bag, and it's my favorite of the three bags that we're going to review today. Even though it costs as much as a T3i kit, it's great to travel with, it's great for walking around town, and it gives you ready access to your lenses, so if you're somebody who needs to change lenses regularly, you could do it easily. My favorite feature has a little pocket up here in the front, and if you're taking airplane uh, travel, you know, you always are getting out your boarding pass and your passport a hundred times over and over and over again. It's got a pocket that makes that really easy and zippers closed to keep it nice and safe. You can see it's got a nice hook on there to keep the uh, top hatch open. So you can unhook that pretty readily. Put this down, grab your camera. You have plenty of room to take a lens off and put another lens on and get back to shooting. It's deep enough to hold a big 7200 like this as long as you don't have it on the body. If you have it on the body, it, it'll poke up a little bit. You could probably technically make it work. Um, it's also, it's better suited to smaller DSLRs. If you put a full frame, big DSLR in there, like a big fat D810, uh, it'll, it'll fit in there, but it'll really poke out. So it's better for APS-C cameras or things like a Sony a7 would be just fine. Inside, we've got a little pocket here and this little Velcro pocket makes it really easy to store memory cards. So you can just quickly grab a memory card and you can reposition that if you want to. There are a couple of pockets here on the front for just miscellaneous things. Here I've got a timer in this one and they're all just really easy to access and I appreciate that they expand a little bit and they're easy to get into because I'll show you in a second a bag that isn't so easy. On the left side and right side we have two little pockets each with two separate panels in them for storing little bits and pieces, extra batteries, whatever, and they both expand out and get to be pretty fat. That's good for storing a bunch of stuff in, of course, just for seeing what you're looking for. On the back side here, believe it or not, you can store an entire laptop and you don't even really notice it. It fits, fits my Dell XPS 13, so a 13 inch laptop should be fine, like the smaller MacBook Air should be fine too, uh, but you wouldn't want to try to fit a 15 inch laptop in there. My bag is the Low Pro Flipside 10 liter bag. It also comes in a 15 liter if you want something bigger. Why is it called the Flipside? Well, you can take it off and you can spin it around your waist. You have a waist strap here and then you can zip it open and access everything you need. Another thing I like about the, the flap being on the back is that if you're walking around a city, no one can just open up the back of your bag without you knowing and take any of your stuff. It's a sporty bag, so it comes with a pouch here. You can purchase one of those water bags with a tube. And if you're hiking with it, you can drink your water. I have water in it now. It also has space for a tripod. And if it starts to rain, there's this little sack that comes out the bottom and you can cover up your whole backpack just to make sure it's extra waterproof or sandproof or dustproof, whatever you need. Uh, overall, I really like the bag. It's sporty. It's a bit inconspicuous. I'd say the cons of the bag are that, well, I haven't really broken it in yet, but so far the straps can be a little bit uncomfortable. It's also small. Like I said, it's the 10 liter version, not the 15 liter version. I went for a hike to Machu Picchu and I couldn't really fit any snacks or anything other than just a couple lenses and my camera. The other downside to it being the smaller model is that your, your lenses have to be laying down. Otherwise, if you try to stand them up in the bag, they'll be digging into your back. The same thing with a large camera body. So the smaller version, I'd recommend it for people using a mirrorless camera or a smaller DSLR. Uh, people that just want something small, light, on the go and don't need to bring a ton of gear. Overall, I like it. One of the problems with the Domkey bag is it's not completely waterproof. It's also not good for hiking around because it always goes across, well, one of your shoulders and that's fine when you're walking around town and kind of a bummer if you need to walk up a mountain or you need to walk some particular distance or your hands are full because you're carrying your luggage and something else. So uh, I often I use, prefer to use a, a real backpack and this is the Langley Pro Alpha in olive. They have it available in different colors and I like it because it doesn't look like a camera bag. <laughs> it looks pretty nice. And we walked around Machu Picchu for a week, including going up a 200 flight mountain. <laughs> and uh, I loved it. It always felt really comfortable. I love this bag when it's on my back. And if you can tell from the texture of it, it's completely waterproof. I pretty much hated this bag anytime it wasn't on my back though. Uh, oh, just look how nice the design touches are. I really love the way it looks. Um, 
you can see everything zippers up and keeps it really secure. Nobody's going to pop into this bag and steal anything. It's simply too difficult to get into. There's plenty of room on the top for, you can see I just have a spare camera in there. The top is really intended for accessories, you know, your orange, which I'm sure everybody has. There's also a smaller pocket in here. This is the most useful of all the pockets, this little zipper pocket in here. And this is where I keep stuff I really need to access readily. Well, ibuprofen, but also memory cards and batteries. And of all the pockets, this is the only one that's really easy to get into, this in the top section here. Um, these sides open up to provide you even more room. In the back here, there's a slot for a laptop or some other paperwork. But one of the problems with this is that you can see it goes down really deep all the way <laughs> to my elbow. And so I would use it to store my passport or something else and or you know maps and such and they would just keep getting lost and it was just kind of difficult to get into it also requires you to completely take it off and set it down somewhere to go through it so when you're in a crowded place like Machu Picchu it makes it always made me feel like I was going to lose something even though it did a great job of storing everything you have three pockets on the front and sides here and these pockets are just terrible just awful now they're all waterproof and that's nice but this front pocket is okay. I can reach in and get stuff from here, plastic bags in case I need to throw something away. But these side pockets are almost useless and you really, you kind of need them in these scenarios. So I have some memory cards in there, but I just can't get to them. So you end up, all you can do is like reach in and pull every single item, oh, <laughs> I keep dropping them, every single item out and set them somewhere until you find that one specific thing you're looking for and as you're putting your hand in there it scratches your hand up the the zippers here I just learned to really hate <laughs> both of these side pockets when I was trying to travel around they're just almost useless they don't expand at all uh, but they are waterproof so I'll give them credit for that the actual camera is stored in this center part here and this is the worst feature of this bag so it unzips like this and you can see well first as you pull it open this separate section kind of hangs down even when you pull this up, so you have to kind of hold both of that. And then you have to kind of like pull it out of the way, which is easy now because it's mostly empty, but you, when you put a couple of jackets in there, other stuff, when I have it full, it gets almost impossible and I really can't even see in there. You can't even really flip it back. Uh, I have a laptop in there now. If I take the laptop out, it gets a little easier, but even flipping it back is just difficult, especially when this is stuffed full because the back here has so much, but okay. So you finally have it flipped open and now you can get to your camera and switch lenses if you need to. Uh, but even now, if you can kind of see, there's room for a camera and maybe three lenses in there, but the space isn't deep enough for a 70 to 200 and you can fit a full frame DSLR in there just barely. They do come with dividers like this uh, that work pretty well, but overall, it's just, this isn't the right bag if you're going to be going into it a lot to pull out lenses, even though it does look nice. Great for storing, not great for actually swapping lenses. On the bottom here, you can see it has a couple of straps where you can put a tripod through and store it. And uh, I found that pretty useful, though I would have preferred the tripod were stored vertically on the side. It's stored horizontally, which makes your whole body a little bit wider and means you're kind of whacking your tripod against people as you walk past. Not the most convenient way to store it. If you like this video, please subscribe down below to see more like it. If you'd like to support us and learn a ton about photography, you can check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography, at Amazon or our website, northrip.photo. That's all. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye. Are you trying to scrouch down so I don't look so short? Yes. Is scrouch a word? <laughs> scrouch. Scrouch. Scrooch. Er, bye. Bye. <laughs>